A man is in critical condition tonight and a homeowner and his girlfriend are shaken up after a very scary situation in Polk County. Haines City Police say the homeowner had to fire his gun at two home invaders. Unexpectedly interrupting a burglary that was taking place at his home, an armed homeowner in Polk County shocked the neighborhood with a mind-boggling entrance. Well, the police chief here in Haines City says the homeowner is not under arrest and that's because they believe this case is one of stand your ground. Yep, no suited people to be on that plank. Tina Phillip takes no chances. Her Haines City home is loaded with weapons like machetes and baseball bats, and this sign hangs near her front door. Everybody come by and see them signs. According to Tina, her nephew came home around 1.30 Friday morning with his girlfriend and puppy to find two burglars inside his home. And all of a sudden, there's these two strangers standing inside your kitchen and within feet of you almost face to face. Chief Greg Gorek says the homeowner, a legal gun owner, fired five shots before retreating and leaving the home with his girlfriend and dog. Police later found one of the two suspects at this nearby park. He had four bullet wounds, two in the upper chest and two in his lower extremities, his legs. The incident occurred at the home of Mr. John Anderson, a resident of Polk County who is 52 years old. At approximately 10 p.m. after a pleasant evening out with his family, he was on his way home when he spotted an unusual car nearby, saw something odd, and he stepped cautiously to his front door to investigate more. Anderson was met with a startling sight as he soon entered his house. Three people were rummaging through his personal possessions, subsequently identified as Peter Ross, age 27, Emily Thompson, 22, and Michael Wilson, aged 31. They were obviously attempting to break in. Mr. Anderson reacted quickly. He pulled his lawfully held gun and ordered the invaders to stop their criminal behavior. The immediate amazement on the robber's expression swiftly changed to terror as they tried to exit the area. But before the police could come, the quick-thinking homeowner blocked their escape route and captured two offenders. Despite briefly managing to avoid being apprehended, the third suspect was shortly apprehended thanks to the joint efforts of neighborhood police and K-9 teams. Gorick says even though 27-year-old Tyreek Washington had committed a crime and was stealing jewelry from the home, his officers had a duty to give him quick medical care, and the chief believes these officers saved his life. He is critical, but stable, but he is still alive today. As for the homeowner, Gorick says he isn't in trouble. But based on the totality of the evidence at this time, it does appear to be a case of stand your ground. And he hopes it's a case that will discourage other would-be burglars. One should expect that if you're brazen enough to enter into someone's residence and it is not yours, with intent to commit an unlawful act, there may be repercussions. We live in Florida, and more so we live in Polk County, and most people are armed. Further investigation, according to the police, revealed that the burglars entered Mr. Anderson's house through a back window that had been damaged. The theft of expensive items, including jewelry and gadgets estimated to be worth $30,000, is believed to have motivated the crime. This incredible sum exemplifies the brazenness, the perseverance of these perpetrators. The law enforcement officials commended Mr. Anderson for his bravery and his fast thinking while reiterating the significance of homeowners' rights to defend themselves and their property. Polk County Sheriff Robert Thompson commended Mr. Anderson for the effort. Along with the praise from law enforcement, the community has come together to support Mr. Anderson, praising his bravery and his diligence. Relieved that a member of their neighborhood could handle a potentially deadly scenario, neighbors showed their gratitude. Many people have even started talking about a neighborhood watch program to increase security in the region. Ross, Thompson, and Wilson, the three individuals who were only recently caught, have been convicted of theft and burglary crimes. They were then accused of several offenses, including burglary, possession of stolen goods, and preparation for a crime. They might even get severe prison terms if found guilty. The argument over whether or not private individuals must be permitted to own and carry weapons for personal defense has been reignited by this occurrence. Guns in the home discourage burglars, according to supporters, and owners and their loved ones may stay secure. Others on the opposing side of the debate call for more gun control regulations, as I'm sure you know, highlighting the risks that come with criminals having access to firearms. The Polk County Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney's Office will collaborate closely as the investigation progresses to guarantee that justice is done. The tragedy has soberly reminded Polk County residents and others that protecting possessions and personal safety requires being aware and taking the appropriate safeguards. Since the three suspects involved in the attempted break-in at Mr. John Anderson's residence were apprehended, the police have begun recreating the events before it. It was revealed that the burglars had carefully planned their entry into the home and had damaged a back window to do so. 
They picked the neighborhood that seemed to be a tranquil residential area to assault, which stresses the importance of constant vigilance and preemptive security measures. The detained individuals were charged with a number of crimes, including burglary, possession of stolen items, and conspiracy to commit a felony. Given the seriousness of their acts and the possible risk they posed to Mr. Anderson and his property, the charges were appropriate. The suspects were charged, brought into prison, and detained in the adjacent county jail as the case progressed. Police enforcement continued its investigation during this period in order to gather information and develop a strong case against the accused. The district attorney's office closely examined the evidence presented by police enforcement to develop a strong prosecution case. This involved reviewing witness testimony, looking through forensic information, and evaluating the defendant's criminal records. Eventually, the accused were brought before a courtroom for an arraignment. During the arraignment, the charges against them were formally read to them, and they had the option of making a plea. Remember that in a court of law, a defendant is presumed innocent unless they are proven guilty. According uh, on the specifics of the case, the district attorney's office may have presented the suspects with a plea bargain, which enables them to acknowledge guilt to certain counts in exchange for leniency on other concessions. However, the particulars of any plea bargaining would be left up to the legal system and prosecution's discretion. In the events that the suspects decide against accepting a plea deal, the matter would go to trial. During a trial, the prosecution and defense would present the judge or jury with their arguments and supporting evidence. To support the defendant's guilt or innocence beyond a reasonable doubt would be the goal of the trial. Mr. Anderson may have been called to the stand to share his version of events during the trial. The prosecution would have presented evidence to support their case, including security camera footage, forensic analysis, and any recovered stolen property. Following then, the guard would have the ability to refute the evidence and present their own justifications and witnesses. After carefully evaluating all of the evidence and arguments, the judge or jury would have reached a decision. If the suspects had been found guilty, the court would have proceeded to the punishment phase. The sentencing process would consider the seriousness of the charges, the prisoner's criminal history, and any aggravating or mitigating factors. The penalties for the offenses related to the burglary attempt can be severe and vary from probation to jail, depending on the jurisdiction and particular facts of the case. It's important to stress that the judge's or jury's judgment would determine the case's final outcome after considering all applicable laws and regulations. But to enhance personal safety and reduce the risk of accidents like burglaries, you can take several proactive measures. Hear this out. Install durable locks on strong doors and windows. Consider adding deadbolts, security bars, or locking systems to reinforce access locations. When you're out of home or at night, lock all windows and doors. Contrarily, spend money on a security system with cameras, motion detectors, and alarms. To discourage possible burglars, post signs showing the presence of a security system. Additionally, well-lit areas surrounding your home might serve as a deterrent to thieves. Place outside lights next to roads, pathways, entrances. Think about installing lights that will turn on when someone moves close by. Likewise, develop a neighborhood watch program in cooperation with your neighbors. Watch out for each other's properties, immediately report any suspicious activity to the police, and maintain contact via neighborhood communication channels. Meanwhile, remember to build solid bonds with your neighbors to build a feeling of community and a network of support. Learn the habits of your neighbors and volunteer to look after their houses while they're abroad. As a word of the occurrence spread, the locals and internet communities flooded in to applaud Mr. Anderson's deeds. Many praised his bravery and fast thinking, highlighting how crucial it is for house owners to be ready to defend their belongings and themselves. Gun rights supporters contend that well-armed civilians significantly deter criminals, possibly stopping additional harm and criminal activity. The event has, however, reopened the discussion of gun control. Gun control components contend that situations like these highlight the hazards posed by weapons, highlighting the possibility of harm occurring if a weapon ends up in the wrong hands. They need tougher rules to assure responsible ownership and lower the possibility of accidents or misuse. Beyond the immediate effects of the affected community, situations like this spur discussion on more general public safety problems. It emphasizes the necessity for an all-encompassing strategy incorporating community involvement, police enforcement activities, and preventative measures. All citizens may benefit from a safer environment if law enforcement organizations, local watch programs, and community leaders work together effectively. This instance also brings to light the need for funding programs for crime prevention and support networks to address the underlying reasons for criminal behavior. Communities may lower crime rates and create safer conditions for everyone by addressing root causes, including poverty, substance addiction, and a lack of opportunity. At the end of the day, the armed Polk County homeowner's experience with intruders inside his house is a potent reminder of the 
value of personal protection and the right to self-defense. It draws the attention to ongoing arguments between proponents of gun rights and those of control, igniting discussions about responsible ownership and public safety. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news on crime daily. Remember that swift reporting can stop crimes from happening again and shield others from peril. If you want to watch other crime and self-defense videos like this, follow the video links on your screen right now.